They say the only certain things in life are death and taxes, but this isn't necessarily true. Aging, and by extension death, is caused at the most fundamental level by cells within our bodies losing the ability to repair themselves. This problem, however, is not present in all species. There are organisms living right now on this planet that don't play by the same rules that we do and are effectively immortal. These are five immortal species. What you are looking at right now is a hydra, which is a simple freshwater species of hydrozoa that is just 15 millimeters in length. Compared to mammals and avians, this is a very primitive form of life, and its average life expectancy is incredibly ordinary. Hydras typically live for just a few years before succumbing to the elements. By now you may be wondering why this creature is even on a list of immortal organisms in the first place. For that question, it's important to understand the meaning of immortality. If a creature is immortal, that doesn't mean that it is invulnerable. If you were to slice a hydra into pieces, it would perish. The same is true if you were to infect a hydra with a deadly disease. In fact, most hydras perish from this cause. However, under optimal circumstances, hydras could theoretically live forever. One biologist observed a hydra in a laboratory environment for four years, and at the end of the period, the hydra had not aged at all. Since this experiment, it has been concluded by the scientific community that the hydra is biologically immortal. How this works is that hydras have unique stem cells that almost flawlessly regenerate. So while this tiny creature is very vulnerable to the elements and infectious diseases, under the right conditions, it could easily stay youthful and live for the rest of time. This is a planarian flatworm. They are extremely common and probably can be found in a river right near your home. Planarian flatworms have many extraordinary abilities, such as the ability to regenerate lost body parts and also total biological immortality. However, unlike the hydra, the planarian flatworms are rather difficult to dismember. If you were to slice a planarian flatworm straight down the middle, both equal halves would regrow and you would find yourself with two identical planarian flatworms that are effectively clones of each other. It doesn't even matter if you cut a planarian at the head or into dozens of pieces, each part will always regrow a full body. This species is so resilient that it has been described as immortal under the edge of a knife. In fact, as little as 1 279th of a planarian is all that is required for successful regeneration. But what makes this species immortal is the power of stem cells. Planarian flatworms are filled with stem cells, which are cells that are capable of creating any other type of cell. One fifth of all cells in a planarian flatworm are stem cells. Planarian stem cells in particular appear to be able to divide indefinitely without any error ignoring the telomerase limit. This puzzling ability has been the focus of intense scientific research in recent years, but our understanding of the planarian flatworm is still very limited. But we do know that barring infections which claim the lives of most planarian flatworms in the wild, these worms are immortal. Most animals stop growing when they reach sexual maturity and begin to acutely suffer the negative effects of aging. This is not the case with many species of lobsters. Lobsters have an enzyme that is unique to their anatomy and can repair repetitive DNA sequences in their genome, thus allowing cell division to occur with negligible risks. Research suggests that lobsters do not slow down, weaken, or even lose fertility with age. In fact, older lobsters are even more fertile than younger lobsters. But this is also their greatest weakness. As a lobster ages and becomes larger, so does the shell it requires. The larger the shell a lobster has, the more difficult it is to shed. The main cause of mortality in lobsters is actually death from exhaustion while molting. 
10 to 15 percent of lobsters die of exhaustion during molting. By far, the shell of a lobster is the weakest part of this organism, because even assuming a lobster can survive a molt late in its life, the shell often becomes damaged and infected, leading to a lobster's death. However, barring this aspect of their biology, under ideal conditions, lobsters could effectively live forever, and even in the wild, they often live to be many centuries old. The Turritopsis dorni is truly an immortal creature. Unlike other species of jellyfish, the Turritopsis dorni has no biologically imposed upper limit on its lifespan. This is because this species can return to its infant state when it is placed under environmental stress. How this works is that if a dorni jellyfish is exposed to environmental stress or physical assault, or is sick or old, it can revert to its infant state forming a new jellyfish colony of identical clones that will then re-emerge as healthy adults. This ability to reverse the biotic cycle is unique in the animal kingdom and allows this jellyfish to bypass death itself. Theoretically, this process of rebirth can go on indefinitely, effectively rendering the Turritopsis dorni biologically immortal. However, in nature, conditions are far from ideal, and most Turritopsis are weak creatures that are likely to succumb to predation or disease while in their adult stage, without reverting to its infant form. As a result, the world is not overrun with hordes of immortal jellyfish clones. There is still a great deal we simply do not understand about the numerous tree species that inhabit our planet. The Pinus longiva is a great example of this, because it appears to be immortal, but scientists can't quite prove it. One documented species of longiva appears to be over 5,000 years old, and short of observing this species for many millennia on end, we have few ways to determine their theoretical maximum lifespan. But all evidence points towards the species and others being biologically immortal. The Pinus longiva, which is an impressive species, is not even the oldest tree in existence. This colony of pando trees in Utah, for example, is more than 80,000 years old. What makes it even stranger is that this forest of trees is in fact not a forest at all, but is instead one single organism, and a male organism at that. All trees in this colony have identical genetic markers and share a massive underground root system that has withstood the test of time. Given the fact that these roots have continued to sprout new trees uninterrupted for tens of thousands of years, it is likely that colonies like these could live indefinitely under the right conditions. And they likely will, as this colony of trees has been living under the sun for longer than humans have been able to write, and likely will continue to live on indifferently long after the people we love, the countries we inhabit, and the ideals we cherish have long been forgotten. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.